All right, Shalom. I'm giving all glorification, honor, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the venerable apostles of the Great Millstone, along with the bishops and Sequan Young, who were ruling and teaching the church well in these last days. And salutations to the Bayath Shah Dawada, the house of David the elect, Shamar Moth. Here to weigh in on the latest controversy in Israel, all right, which centers around this wolf in sheep's clothing, calling himself a teacher, Nathaniel Alaga, Bishop Nate of the IUIC, and his latest heresy uh, that. Uh, Esau and the nations are going to revolt and come against Israel after the kingdom of heaven has been established upon the earth. And after that first thousand years, you know, um, when Yahweh comes back, <clears throat> and uh, you know a lot of Christians teach that, you know. But um, I'm not gonna play any of it. The uh, the elders have gone into it, you know, beginning with the apostles, of course, on down. But um, there's not gonna be any rebellion. The uh, this third world's war, which is coming quickly pursuant to Revelation chapter 11 and verse 14, okay, is going to, which, you know, spoken of all throughout the prophecies, you know, um, is going to culminate in the valley of Yahweh Shapat, the valley of the Lord's judgment. And that is where the uh, armies of this earth, all right, the heathen nations are right, in their armies and their weaponry will be destroyed once and for all. There will be no, again, rebellion or uprising or warfare, all right, once the kingdom of heaven is established on this earth, all right. Ezekiel's 38 chapter is getting ready to take place, all right, in the very near future. Okay, Gog, which is the so-called Russians, all right, and Magog, which is the landmass, all right, is getting ready to come with an assembly of great nations. Okay, they're gonna hit hit the so-called Israeli state. Okay, not gonna totally destroy that land, but that land is gonna be hit with nukes. Okay, and they're going to completely and utterly annihilate. America, which is Babylon the Great. All right. And again, our Lord and King Yahweh Shai, whose name means he delivers or he saves, is going to come back during the midst of World War Three, in the midst of World War Three Slakia, all right, to redeem his election. All right. The elect of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, along with the Israelite foreigners. His chosen people, all right, the Israelites, starts with the first fruits, the 144,000, his servants, the prophets, the men of the Lord, all right, and it includes that great multitude referenced in Revelation 7 chapter as well, okay, who are going to come out of every nation, they're going to be speaking every tongue, all right, looking like the other nations, etc. All right, once that takes place, there will be no more war. All right. Yahweh Shai is coming to establish peace on this earth. Okay. And the scriptures clearly says, all right, when he comes back, all right, that no one and nobody is going to make Jacob afraid. Okay. Okay. Because the, first of all, all right, the prophets are going to have them immortal bodies. 
be immortals. Okay? I have spiritual power. The nations, especially Esau, so-called white man, you know, are not going to uh, make Jacob afraid no more. All right? They're not going to <laughs> gather up weaponry, okay, and come, all right, against, you know, Israel. All right, Yasharala, the son, the sons of the Most High Power. It's not going to happen. All right, Nate's lost his mind. He's lost the oil. However you want to say it, he's definitely a sellout. He has sold the fuck out. This guy is a charlatan, and and basically that's what happens. You know, he's he's a very covetous man. All right, and let me let me get a scripture real quick. I'm not going to make this long at all again because the apostles, the bishops and elders have thoroughly covered covered this. I'm coming at it from a little different angle. That none, I, you know, where it says in the scriptures, none shall make him afraid. Okay. I'm going to have to be in fear about some war, you know. Again, that's getting ready to go down now. You know, now. You know. All we gotta uh all we gotta wait on, you know, <clears throat> is you know, a few more prophecies to be fulfilled, and that's when this war sparks off and goes global. All right. But um Yeah, this this guy, this guy is a complete sellout. He has literally sold his soul to Satan, Esau. All right. Oh, uh, verse Timothy chapter six and verse nine. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a sneer, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. And this man is going to be drowned in that lake of fire. All right. At least he repents. Okay. Apart from repentance, you know, this man is going to drown in that lake of fire, which is the second death. All right. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. And which is a result, which will be a result, Slagia, of the nuclear destruction is coming to this place. It says, verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all evil. This man loves money. This man loves money. Okay, he's obsessed. It says, Which while some coveted after, he's a very covetous man. All right. They have erred from the faith, and that's what happened. He erred from the faith, you know, because he used to teach it straight up and down. You know, he came up under the elder apostle Tahar. You know, he taught the right way. Okay. Um, but he's erred from the faith. Okay. He says, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay. That's what's coming to this guy. And that's what's coming to the leadership that he surrounds himself with. At least they repent. And that's what's coming to his entire congregation. Sorrows. All right, it says, But thou, verse 11, O man of Yahweh, flee these things. All right, so if you're a true man of the Lord, we're supposed to flee covetousness. We're supposed to flee um, the, uh, the love of money. Okay? It says, And follow after righteousness. Godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Verse 12, fight the good fight of faith, and that's what we're doing. And that's why the apostles and, again, the bishops and elders are going so hard, all right, because this is a fight. And the scriptures describes this fight as good. This is the good fight of faith, all right? Not physical. It's all spiritual. We, we, we fight through the spirit, Okay. It says, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast 
professed a good profession before many witnesses. So, yeah, we're set up to defend the gospel. And that's what, you know, the men of the Lord are doing. Okay? They're defending the gospel. You know? It's unbelievable, you know? But it is, but it is prophecy, you know? Evil men... It was written down thousands of years ago that evil men, so like you were going to wax worse and worse. And this guy is waxing worse and worse. What will he come up with next? Okay. That there's going to be war in the kingdom. <laughs> so I'm not going to, you know, again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to regurgitate, you know. Um, I just jotted down a couple of precepts. All right, so I'm going to get right into it. Let's go to Zephaniah. None shall make Jacob afraid. All right, once the Lord comes back, that's it. Okay. Jake, again, beginning with the election, will be at rest. There will be peace. There will there will be order. You know, there will be righteousness. Remember, this is the kingdom wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's what we're all looking for, man. Okay, because this place is unrighteous. Okay. And men like Nathaniel, Bishop Nate, they're unrighteous. Okay. We're looking for that kingdom wherein dwelleth righteousness. Okay, this is Zephaniah chapter three. I'm getting right to the uh, point. Um, well, I'll start in verse 11, Zephaniah chapter three and verse 11. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. All right, the holy mountain of the Lord, that's, that's the governing body. That's the elect. All right, that's the elect man. That's the... The 12,000 men from the 12 tribes, all right, headed by the, the, the 12 tribes, headed by the 12 apostles, King David sitting on his throne, Malak Dawada, ruling and reigning on the earth, okay? That's that's the Lord's holy mountain, okay? The governing body. All right, of course, all right, our Lord Yahweh Shai, over, uh, over the 144, and over King David, all right, because he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. Yahweh Shai, and that's another thing. This man doesn't teach his congregation. He doesn't teach his congregation to trust in the name of the Lord. He used to, but again, it is his well, a lot of things. His pride, okay, which. The scriptures talks about pride going before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. His pride got in the way. All right. He became covetous. You know, he became a lover of money. All right. And he aired, and, and again, we just read it. He erred from the faith. Man. Okay. We, we, we teach our people to trust in the name of the Lord. Trust in that strong tower. Yahweh All right. It says verse 13. This is the point. The remnant of Israel. Shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down. All right, enjoy the kingdom. Okay? And none shall make them afraid. None shall make them afraid. Okay? Not going to be worrying about no damn war. Not going to be sure, sure as hell I ain't going to be worried about Esau rebelling. <laughs> Hey, what are they going to come at the elect with, huh? Sticks and stones? Okay, not going to be worried about the, 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 the nations, you know, rising up. And that's, again, the, the, this war spoken about in Ezekiel 38, chapter 4, example, is the war to end all wars. You know, once the Prince of Peace returns, that's it. That's it. Okay? 
Again, the holy mountain of the Lord, the 144,000 are going to be ruling this earth, all right, with a rod of iron, beating these nations into submission, you know, beating the law, statutes, and commandments into them. Yes, that's in the Bible, okay? And, 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 and nothing or no one is going to get or willing as us in our way, okay, of executing judgment in the earth, okay? We're going to be gods, man. All right. Again, it, uh, immortals. It's crazy, man. None shall make them afraid. None shall make them afraid. Let's go to the next precept. I don't want to take too much time once again. Right, this is just insanity, man. <laughs> Utter insanity. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah this time. Jeremiah 46. But every every one of us has a role to play, right? You know, there has to be wicked prophets. You know, there has to be righteous prophets. And there has to be wicked prophets. You know? Can't have one without the other, right? Our power is a, is, is a balanced power. All right, our God is a balanced God. All right. A false balance is an abomination to Yahweh. So, again, you can't have righteous prophets without wicked prophets. Jeremiah chapter 46. In uh, verse 27. But fear, fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel. All right. Twelve tribes. Before, behold, I will save thee from afar off, right? Because our people are scattered into the four corners of the earth, all right? Pursuant to the uh, curses, Deuteronomy 28 chapter, all right? So it says, I will save thee from afar off and thy seed from the land of their captivity, which proves that this is about a race of people, right? This is about a nation of people, Okay? And thy seed from the land of their captivity, vocab alone. And Jacob shall return and be in rest and at ease. How can you be at ease if you are having to defend yourself from Esau, who's going to come out of the Caucasus Mountains with the nations uh, uh, ready for war? <laughs> uh, crazy. It says, and Jacob shall return and be in rest and at ease. And none shall make him afraid. See? None shall make him afraid. All right. Fear, fear thou not. Verse 28. O Jacob, my servant, saith the Lord Yahweh, for I am with thee. For I will make a full end of all the nations whither I have driven thee. See, he's going to make a full end of all the nations, man. Okay? That happens. That's going to happen again in the very near future. All right? The nations are going into slavery. The nations are going into bondage. The nations are going into captivity. Okay? Never to rise up again, man. All right? I can't, uh, what's that scripture? Of, of affliction will not rise a second time. What I'm very roughly paraphrasing it. Um, it says, But I will not make a fool in thee, but correct thee in measure. Yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. Right? Because... The two thirds have to be punished, man. Okay, they're gonna the two thirds are gonna be visited by the Lord during the time of Jacob's trouble and have to feel death by pain for rejecting the testimony of the prophets. All right, for rejecting Yahweh by Shemuel Shai. All right, for their for their own belief. Okay. Um, let's go to uh, let's go to Ezekiel and then I'll wrap this up. Ezekiel thirty four. Verse 26, Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 26, and I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing, and I will cause the shower to come down 
in his season there shall be showers of blessings all right the kingdom of heaven is going to be you know beautiful man all right a blessing all right there's going to be peace and, and tranquility and you know beginning with the men of the lord there's going to be rest okay it's going to be paradise and the tree of the field, verse 27, shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land. See? And they shall be safe in their land. No uprising, no revolt, no rebellion. <laughs> they shall be safe in their land. They shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, Bahasim Yahweh Sai, when I have broken the bands of their yoke. And delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. Right. Our deliverance from our enemies, the nations, again, who will be slaves. Okay. They will be working, laboring. It says the elites of Esau, the Mount of Esau, you know, them Rothschilds and Rockefellers, etc. They're, they're going to be men of continual employment. All right. The word employee goes back to the word slave. That's Ezekiel, the uh, 39th chapter. Okay? It says, verse 28, and, and they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. That's right, man. None shall make them afraid. So this guy... You know, again, say it however you want to say it. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's a charlatan. He's a sellout. He's an agent. Okay. He, he, uh, he, and he's paid, man. He's paid off. Okay. Not every time we say agent, not every time we say someone's an agent doesn't mean they're, they're literally, you know, being paid. But this man is guaranteed, man. Okay. And if I'm wrong, you know, hey, I'll say I'm wrong and I'll repent. But, <laughs> uh, hey, stay away from men like this, you know, because there's, I'm sure, sincere men in this camp all right, who, uh, who are a part of this congregation, rather, you know. Uh, but, you know, you, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to come, you got to come out of it. You got, you, you know, you got to, you got to flee. You know, you got to flee from, from this man. This man is a grievous wolf, man. Okay? Period. He is a grievous wolf. All right? And his time's coming, man. You know, his time is coming. So, that's all I got for now. Hey, Lord willing, he was edified through the Spirit. And with that, I want to say shalom. It's on to the next video.